Kelly T from Kelly T Black Metal Reviews, and I'm here with the USBM artist that we know as Nobody. He's behind the Black Metal solo project Vide. He's also a part of so many other different projects, which we'll talk about very, very soon. But Nobody, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I'm very, very excited to do this. It's truly an honor because since discovering your work, um, last year, I've just become a huge fan of your work. You know, you create something really, really unique within your music. So for people who aren't that familiar with Vibe yet, um, you need to be. So jump onto his band camp under Vibe and there's all sorts of music going on there. He has a huge discography from so many different uh, projects outside of black metal as well. So I want to start though, nobody with where this all began for you. You know, your first demo was released in 2018. Demo one, you called it. Were you creating music well before this? And if so, was it always black metal or what sort of your musical past before this project? Um, well, I started, I guess, 10, 15 more years ago, you know, doing band stuff. Uh, I've always done vocals and bands, yeah. um, never done the solo thing, never done black metal before that either. Just, you know, metal that was popular at that time, I should say. Yeah. And uh, just the scenes around here have never been the most welcoming. So bands were hard to come by that, you know, everyone aligned musically. Yeah. So eventually I just kind of gave up and uh, started doing solo stuff uh originally the first solo stuff was empty mm -hmm. then uh dabbled in the black metal with all monsters then got into some dead bodies anonymous hands and then vide eventually came so kind of just rolled into that all by accident each time <laughs> yeah right so i want to talk about the type of music that you create with vide too because a lot of people and i've been guilty of it too do put you into that dsbm sub sub genre is that where your music sits i, I mean i I've, I've been bumped into that a lot and i get why mm. um you know i i make music that is you know releasing whatever's inside me whether it's the demons the hate the depression you know we all have it but it's yeah. i don't i don't aim to make black metal that's sad and depressive i just make music that is about sadness and depression sometimes, but it's about other things as well. Yeah. Um, I just do what I think is black metal to me and whatever happens, happens. And I just, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'll, yeah, so it is what it is. And it's bloody good, that's for sure. I love your your ambition, you know, clearly you're, you're being recognised as a very ambitious artist. I mean, you've got not only your black metal project Vide, you've got your obnoxiously heavy old school death metal project with Some Dead Bodies. dark wave, new, new wave, post-punk stuff. That's such an underrated project. I love Empty. And then you've got your goth uh, electronica industrial project with anonymous hands. I'm not done yet. Uh, the black and roll, black and death rock project, All Monsters. And they all debuted releases in 2018. I mean, it's so impressive. How the fuck do you do it, number one? And, you know, was this sort of the plan or was it just a case of, the art, you know, your artistic flow was just happening and you just needed to keep expressing through these different forms of music? I, I mean, bottom, bottom line is I just, I love music. I don't just like black men. I don't like just this or that. I, I like music. Yeah. And so, like, like I said, my first solo was empty. And that's kind of where I started experimenting. First time playing guitar, first time playing bass, first time playing anything and everything, doing literally everything. The production, I'd never done any of that before. I'm self-taught, just kind of figured it out as I went. Yeah. 
and then as that went on, All Monsters came. Um, I actually started in 2017, about around winter time, and then I started realizing, well, I'm able to do this kind of new sound because I did like black metal, always have, mm-hmm. but I didn't realize it could do that. So as I started discovering that, I was like, well, you know, I'd done death metal before that, but never, again, never solo. So I was like, well, I'm going to try a more old school death metal that I like. But that project, again, or I should say, is not all entirely solo. That's the only project I do collaborate with guitarist on. That's true, yeah. But, you know, as I started discovering each with each project, I was like, well, if I'm getting better at this and I can try this and try that and everything just kind of revolved and I just really you know again I I like music so I was like well I want to create a project around this type of genre that I like and then this type of genre that I like try to keep them their own identity rather than being you know like some bands will have every album sounds a little different here and there which is fine but I like to give them their own personality their own identity that's why they have their own name and I keep them separate and I don't say this is all just one thing, even though it is. Yeah. Yeah, I think you've done a really good job at doing that, actually, you know, that differentiation between all of them. And, you know, you obviously do have a big appreciation for music. And I've I've always said, as much as I love black metal, I never, you know, I never trust anyone that says they only listen to black metal because it comes from somewhere. So it's all got different influences. But... I love all of your projects, as you know, but I do want to focus more on Vide more than anything today, if that's okay with you. After the release of Demo 1, you put out an absolutely cracking, devastating Demo 2, which is one of my favourites from 2019. There's such a tortured darkness within the sound of this, and when I heard it for the first time, it was so different to any of the other black metal I was listening to, and I was just drawn to it really hard you know even with those black and roll seemingly upbeat beats it's just still had this murkiness to it and you know from a black metal perspective I'd love to know who you'd say your biggest black metal influences are that shape your sound with Vibe. Well I, I definitely would say that the biggest influences and it I wouldn't say that's where my sound comes from but it does influence me is, is pretty much the early black metal I, I, I love early black, Bathory Mm-hmm. Dark Throne, um, you know, Burzum, that that early first wave, second wave stuff is really what I'm into. I'm real nostalgic. I prefer the older music versus new stuff. Yeah. So it's that's what I will listen to to get inspiration. I don't think, obviously, I don't sound like any of that, but it's what I listen to before I try to create something. Right. Okay. That's good to know. You know, obviously your other musical projects are very strongly influenced by bands like Joy Division, The Cure, The Smiths, um, obviously The Misfits because you released a cover of their track, Some Kind of Hate, which is very, very cool. What are some of the left field influences that shape your black metal, though, that would take us by surprise? Well, I wouldn't say it's directly influencing the black metal, but I mean, I get influences from everything, but I would say the closest thing probably would be stuff like Faith No More. I'm mm. a big Mike Patton fan. Uh, fa- failure. I uh, love Failure. Uh, typo Negative, of course. Yeah. Uh, Rocky Erickson, um, 13 Floor Elevators, you know, old school psychedelic stuff. But I mean, I'll, I'll take anything. I, I can hear anything from all genres and, and just like, oh, well, I hear that tone or I hear that, that vo- vocal pattern or something and I can get ideas from anything. So, I mean, again, it's just, it's a love for all music. Yeah, great. I love that. I saw you posting and tagging uh, Bayou. I, am I pronouncing that right? Because you know my pronunciation is so great. Uh, Bayou Black Metal, which of course sparked my interest and I had to get you to educate me on that um, because here we call a Bayou a swamp or a, a wetland. Uh, where does this come from and how does the concept of the Bayou, um, the swamps, the environment, the surrounds, be it where you are now or in your past, How does that play a role in the black metal that you create? Because your music really does translate those oppressive, heat, swampy type ambiences. So I just wanted to ask you that question. Um, Well, I I say Bayou, uh, but I mean, you know, your accent, that's fine. Uh, Bayou (laughs) is what I call it. Uh, It's just from where I've grown up. Um, I, (laughs) I, I, I grew up literally pretty much on the river, the bayous, you know, I swam in them, gators, you know, frogs, snakes, 
murky, swampy, all that fun stuff. Uh, it's just that's how my early childhood was. And I've just always loved it. It's, it's beautiful to me and it's inspiring. Uh, it's different, you know, yeah. from city life or whatever it may be. And so I just take that for, you know, my inspiration to kind of guide me just the same as, you know, say a dark throne, they're inspired by their region, their forest and all that stuff. Well, yeah. I don't have that. I've got the swamp. So, you know, I just take what I have and, and use that to, to what, you know, guides, guides me, I guess. Yeah. And you can really, you can definitely hear that in, in your sound. That's for sure. You've been cruelly teasing us with uh, tempting tracks off your up and coming debut full length album, Hanging by the Bay You Light. And I get the impression knowing that your music is so dark and bleak. We're not talking about hanging out, having a chin wag by the Bay You Light here. And so immediately I visualise someone literally, <clears throat> you know, hanging from a Bay You Light. And after talking to you, I, you know, you brought me up to speed with the story behind this, which is truly saddening. Um, are you willing to explain this to the people watching today, where this title derived from, and also can we expect the soundscapes and the lyrics to be equally as cold as this title? Yeah, um, so the title has been something that I've had in my notes for a while. I, I, I jot down words, phrases, ideas all the time, and it's something that I've had for a while, and I just waited for the moment where something made sense. Um, so the, the title and the theme come from a story that uh, my grandmother told me as I was growing up and that I'd heard where she had found her father hanging from suicide in, in a barn in their, you know, Louisiana home. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know the full details, but it just, obviously they didn't share that much, but it's something that's always stuck with me. Yeah. And so, you know, as, as a person that dabbles with depression issues, like everyone, I'm sure uh, it's just something that I just wanted to kind of, you know, bring in because my, my first demos from vibe one and two um, it's all family stuff. All the cover artists, family photos, it's not just random pictures. It's yeah. there's, it's family related. So I just wanted to kind of continue that. Um, sound wise, I would say it's, it's a next step level. I, I'm always trying to, you know, change it up a bit. I don't want to, be one thing always one thing I want to as I'm growing and learning with all the stuff I, I like to experiment a little but it's it's still vibe I just think it's a little different a little bit more darker bleaker maybe who knows let the let the people decide I guess yeah that kind of ties in with my next question because I, I wanted to ask how you're feeling about this uh, up-and-coming release because I know you can be your worst critic. I know the artists in general can be their worst critic. So how are you actually feeling about this? And to follow on from that, I was going to ask how this, has this kind of flowed on from demos one and two or have you completely changed its direction? But you've, you've sort of already answered that, but. Well, um, I, I would say like in the past, like when I first did demo one, I, I literally only did it for myself and for a few friends to hear I never had any intention of putting it online. I had never had any intention of really anyone hearing it. Yeah. And then when I got a couple of good compliments, I said, well, fuck it. I'll put it online and see what happens. So I'm the type of person that when I record and I'm, and I'm done with, you know, everything, I'm just ready to release it just to get it out and be done with it. Cause I don't, I don't really listen to my stuff. So with demo two, when it was done, it was pretty much done and, literally 24 hours and then I had it up the next day or the weekend or something like that. So this is the first release where I actually had to wait and have it held back a little bit because we're doing a physical release since, you know, the amazing gems is, is yeah. taking care of me. So I'm, I've had it for a while. I've listened to it for a while and I'm always, I'm, I'm nervous about anything. I don't, I don't think, I mean, I think my stuff's okay. You know, obviously if I thought it was shit, I wouldn't release it, but you know, I, like I said, I don't listen to it. But uh, I'm, I'm nervous, and, but I, I hope and a few people might get it and not hate it. So that's fingers crossed. I'm pretty confident a lot of people will get it and love it. That's just my opinion. 
<laughs> I want to talk to you about uh, the concept behind the track that you uh, teased us with, which is White Noise in a Sea of Corpse Paint. Um, what is this track all about? So, again, like I mentioned before about writing notes, ideas, phrases, that's something I've had for a while. That's not a track that's going to be on this new record. It's, it's going to be for something that comes after. I can't really say much. Um, it, it'll be a surprise. But basically what it is, is is kind of, you know, the typical generic gimmicky black metal you find is some guy in a corpse paint in their backyard holding candles, doing their most creepiest pose while their girlfriend or someone holds a camera and gets the right shot. <laughs> That's cool. I get it. I like it. But, you know, when everyone does it and you have a, a million of those covers that you can't really tell who is who and what is what, I just always felt like I'm just a little... I'm just white noise in that sea of corpse paint. That's kind of where that phrase came from. And one of my friends heard me say that and they said, that's not bad. So yeah, I just concept. went with it. Good concept. I like that. Talking about Jem's label, uh, what a legend and obviously a big fan of your work as well. He puts out a lot of your releases, uh, promotes a lot of your work, which is great. He said, and I want to quote, this next release is possibly the album of the year. And that's a, that's a big call. I'm so excited to hear this album. Um, He's calling it a clever production, implying how creepy it was because he said that the hairs on his arms stood up. Talk me through how you wrote this album, you know, the recording, the production, what, what we can expect in that regard. Um, so originally this was supposed to be a, a demo three or a vibe three, whatever you want to call it. But as I wrote it, as I listened to it, and as I waited, again, I had to wait for a physical release on this one. I kind of ideas just kind of kept flowing and I was like, well, I don't want it to be, you know, two, three songs again. Cause I'm a minimalist. I like less is more that type of thing, but I, I wanted to do more. So since I had some ideas, I had the time, I just wrote what I had in my head and just compiled it, made it work, had a theme already. And it just kind of, it worked. So yeah, it's, it's, that's just how it came to be. Well, we are looking forward to it, that's for sure. Lots of people talking about it. And speaking about that, you know, clearly you have a really strong cult following on Instagram. I'm constantly seeing artists and fans of yours, you know, resharing your posts, sharing your music, which is so, so positive. And I know that you are a very humble person. So how do you feel about this when you're getting this response from your fans? I mean, obviously it must make you feel good, but... That would, I wondered whether you actually do sit and listen to your, your music, you know, months after it's released and stuff, because, yeah, to think that you don't, it's just not, that's crazy to me, but I also understand that you've probably, you've done it and you've moved on. But how are you feeling about the whole response to, um, to your art in general? Uh, I mean, it's, 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 it blows my mind. It really does. I'm, I'm very grateful. I'm thankful. Uh, you know, I, like I said before, this whole all my music really no, it was never intended to be really heard by many people it's just more for me and my friends yeah. just to say like hey let's start a band this is what i can do this is what we can do but you know so when people say nice things compliment it whatever share it i i'm i'm just grateful i, I literally can never say thank you enough it, it does mean a lot it it pushes me to want to you know, not give up, try again and see what other dumb noise I can come up with. <laughs> <laughs> Hard on yourself. Things have certainly changed, you know, within the black metal and people will argue for better or worse, you know, but if people are still creating such dark and devastating black metal, you know, it doesn't have to all be about maximum blasts and constant screaming now. Um, and obviously that cult imagery that you were talking about previously, it's still around, but there seems to be a lot of black metal coming out now where artists, they're moving away from that and ten, tending to bring in their own, um, you know, originality such as yourself. Why do you think this is? I think they're just tired of the same old bullshit. Um, you know, like I said, it's, you can go to Bandcamp 
you can go to Instagram and, and look up the certain hashtag and you're going to just see a hundred guys making black metal in their bedroom and they're all doing the same thing. They all look the mm -hmm. same. They're all doing the same poses, holding the same candles, weapons, chains, whatever it may be. And that shit gets boring. I, I you know, I, I think that's what it pushes people is they're just tired of the same old shit and they want to do something different. Yeah, I think genres have to evolve to a point as well. So it's, it makes it interesting, that's for sure. But talking about imagery in black metal, I mean, clearly no one knows who you are. You keep your, your um, imagery, so to speak, very, very private. But essentially, it's become a part of your imagery because you're, you know, you've got this mystery about you and no one really knows who you are. I mean, we joked once before that you could literally wear your own band shirt to a gig and no one would know. But is this? I got complimented the other day doing that. Actually, did you? <laughs> I, I, it's I, it's hilarious you say that. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, is this more a statement from you, or is this was this just purely a decision so that the music would do the talking for you more than you know any you know appearance or whatnot? It's it's all of the above. Um, I'm I you know I'm the type of person that you know when I listen to any band I like, I don't give a shit what they look like, you know, who they are. And I don't want to be, you know, swayed one way or the other because of whatever, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's about the music. And so I did, yes, always originally just didn't give a shit. Didn't want anyone to really know who I am. It's not important. Doesn't, you know, no one needs to know it's none of their business, but the end it's it's to show that it's it is about the music it's 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 what you hear it doesn't you don't my face my name my whatever it doesn't change the sounds that you hear so you know get your opinion from what you hear yeah great so we did an interview i think early last year maybe for aea fanzine very cool little underground zine and you mentioned that so far the usbm scene had been quite supportive two years down the track are you still finding that within the usbm scene and do you have much affiliation with other black metal scenes around the world I, I mean i like to think so i mean in the sense that i don't i don't really i haven't at least i haven't seen anyone you know hate or dislike or just outright not like me for whatever reason um i mean i definitely get support people are nice they say kind things so i mean i feel I, d I feel supported. Um, I, I'm not necessarily affiliated with any specific scene or, you know, anywhere, or anywhere. Um, it's just a matter of I make music and one day, hopefully I can share it with more people on a stage or, or whatever. Um, so it's just, I still feel small in this huge sea of music. So, but you know, the people that do see it and hear it, they're, they've been cool. Yeah, huge, huge sea of music at the moment. It's nuts. Speaking of that, is there a plan to take Vibe to the stage eventually or will this just remain a recording um, project? If I can find the people that would want to do it, I, you know, when I started all this stuff, all the solo stuff, it was literally just to show the few friends that I have that play music, mm. stuff that I can do, stuff that we could do, so that you know to kind of inspire them because I, I never really have found local people that are into much of what i'm into not that my tastes are unique it's just you know everyone's got their own taste so ideally this music stuff has always kind of been my way of i guess a resume saying i'm a vocalist for hire look what i could do you know we could do something maybe not so bad so if I could ever find a guitarist, bassist, drummer, and so on and so on that would want to, you know, take this live, I, 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 that's, that's a goal. That's always been my dream. I've played live before, so I'd, I'd like to do it again. If not, you know, I'll still keep making music, I'm sure, but it's a goal for sure. That's awesome. I'm sure people will be very, very happy to hear that. That's for sure. You recently did a very cool split with Witchbones, another USBM uh, solo project, and that sold out fast. I mean, that went so, so quick, like all of your stuff and Witchbones stuff just goes like that. And I've said it before, you know, you, you two are very, very different in, in your sound, but you're really, really very aligned in, in the 
just the bleakness and the darkness and devastation of it. So the split works so well. I asked Witchy the same question when we caught up the other week, whether you guys have got more plans to do more collabs. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on that if, if um, that's sort of in the back burner. Um, nothing, nothing's been said or set in stone. I mean, I'm always down. Uh, I'm more of a fan of working together, not necessarily splits. That was kind of my, probably most likely a one-time thing for me. I just, but as far as collaborations, you know, if anyone wants to work and, you know, we get on, you know, get along musically or have some ideas that might work together on, I'm, I'm, I'm down. Um, but you know, we haven't, we haven't really discussed anything past that, but you know, he's a cool guy. So yeah. He is, yeah. What, do, what do you look for when making, so if talking about collaborations more so than splits, what do you look for when considering a collaboration? What's important to you when it comes to collabs? First, it's, it's gotta be a good idea. You know, what, what's the genre, you know, what, what's the end goal? What are you thinking musically? And then roles, you know, who's going to do what. Um, so, you know, if, if I like the music style that they're thinking of, or, you know, I like the idea of they want me to do this or that, if it, if it sounds cool, I'll give it a try. You know, I like, like you know, I like make music. So. Yeah. Never say never, hey? <laughs> you have some pretty sick merch um, that you sell through uh, your band camp and other outlets as well, but a pretty huge thing happened to you recently. You were picked up by Inferno Screen Printing, which is massive because these guys do uh, merch for some pretty big bands, you know, like um, Goat Whore, Lurker and Chalice Heaps. How did this come about and, you know, how's the merch selling so far? Is it being a success, et cetera? Uh, it started, I, I mean, dumb luck, really. <laughs> I, I, I've been a, f a fan of theirs. I follow them. I like their post. And just one day I was like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to message them and say, what is, what, what do you guys do? How does that work? And then I didn't really hear anything much after that. They were really cool, but it just, you know, nothing kind of evolved at that moment. And then randomly enough, they asked, or got in touch with Jim's. Jim said, "Hey, they're interested." Blah 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 blah, and they said, "Let's let's do some shirts." So, just kind of that's how it happened. Um, as far as the first shirt, uh, more than I thought, for sure. So I, I, it's a you know, it's a success to me. Now I can't say success compared to any of the other stuff they do, because they do some really good stuff. So, but for me, I'm, I'm top of the world. So. Oh, it's great to see your name up there on their page. That's for sure. It's awesome. But Hanging by the Bayou Light, it's been released through Gem's label. Do you have a definite date yet? Are you able to mention that? Because, you know, we're all wanting to set our alarms for this one. I do. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it um, was cheeky. <laughs> so it's, it's going to release this month uh, digitally for sure. Physical's been in the works, but, you know, because of this whole covid shit it mm -hmm. I, I, we're expecting it delayed so hopefully that will be out by end of september maybe october but i don't want to say but it the music will be out soon that's okay. the, i'll say it soon great i had to ask i had to ask so you put a question out to some of your fans to uh have the opportunity to ask a question during this interview. So we've picked a few from the ones that have um, asked. So I'll just read them out. So Dan, the mountain music man, what a legend this bloke is. Um, he has asked, is there a music scene where you are from? Because there isn't one where he is. Uh, he feels very inspired, but it's very hard without a scene. And I guess you can relate to this because you were just saying Louisiana doesn't have much of a scene. But uh, yeah, that's Dan's question. Yeah, and 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 to be, you know, to to clear it up, I'm 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 from Louisiana, but I'm in, I'm in the Houston area at the moment. Right. So I'm in Texas, but there is, there is there is a scene. I just they I'm not included in that scene. Right. Um, I've tried. I, I've I've known people. They locals kind of. Um, I'm not in their inner circle, I should say. So to me, yeah, there is a scene, but I, I've unfortunately I haven't been invited into that scene. So that's why I'm solo. <laughs> 
Well, their loss, <laughs> I'm just going to say. Another Instagram user, Elton John, I see what he did there. He would like to know, why so spooky? Fuck if I know. <laughs> <laughs> just because. Just because. It's what I like. Yeah, fair enough. All things spooky. Uh, Jupiter, sometimes we know him as Jay. He asks what your thoughts are on NSBM. Not a fan. Um, shit's lame. Not my thing. In a nutshell. Well answered. And then we have Adam Paris. His question is inspired by your obvious good sense of humour, which we know that you have. He would like to know if you think that the fact black metal historically takes itself so seriously, and for the most part still does, does this impact on the ability to explore new aspects of the subgenre? I definitely don't take myself so seriously. Um, so that's kind of why I just do whatever the hell I want, whether it's good or bad, whether someone gets it or not, it is what it is. But yeah, it, they, they do take themselves pretty damn serious. And, and that's fine. That's just not who I am. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Nobody, this has been such an honour. Honestly, I've loved doing this with you. I think it's been really insightful. I hope people that are watching this get something out of this as well. Is there anything that you would like to leave for people watching this that we might not have covered? Um, just, you know, thank you to anyone that's watching this that has listened, has bought anything, that likes anything I've done, whether it's Vide or any of my projects. Just... I'm grateful. Thank you. I'll never say enough. And if it bothers you that I say thank you a million times, well, get over it. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you. People don't say that enough. So I think it's really cool that you do acknowledge your fans. It's, it goes a long way. So I just want to finish up by saying to anyone who isn't already following Vide, you can find Vide on Empty Vide at Instagram. He has a very cool page and keep your eyes out for Hanging by the Bay You Light releasing digitally in September at some time. So a good chance to keep your eye on that is by following uh, nobody on his empty vibe page. So again, thank you so much. This has been awesome and I'll catch up with you soon. Thank you. Thank you.